Heidi ho welcome back to the happy homestead i'm amanda we are on day 16 of the pantry challenge the three rivers challenge where we are eating what we have we're not going to the store we're not going out to eat so far day 16 day 15 for us because we started on january 2nd and uh i was noticing this morning like i don't i don't feel the need right there are times every now i'm like oh i really need to go just get one or two things like i need to go get that I haven't felt that need yet, um, which is normal. This is, I think, our third or fourth year doing the challenge. And it's not usually till February that I get maybe a little antsy, but it was just something I noticed this morning. I felt like, gosh, we still have a lot of food. I just ate the last of the chili from last week today for lunch. Um, and we have lasagna left. There's a tad bit of mac and cheese left that's probably not gonna last past tonight. Um, so what do we got? Yeah, lasagna. I think that's it. Just the lasagna and a little bit of mac and cheese. So we're working through the leftovers and uh, we're gonna get dinner started for tonight. One thing I have to stop, I noticed. <laughs> it's like pitch black behind me. That's just the living room. I don't have the living room light on. And look, look outside the windows. Like it is, it is like so dark. It's um, 5.40 p.m. at night. It's not even six o'clock at night. I, I can't wait for the days just to get a tad bit longer. Um, it is also going to be ridiculously cold tonight for most of the country. So obviously you're gonna be seeing this the next day, but stay warm, be careful on the roads. Um, so we're gonna have semi kind of comforting meal tonight. I, I pulled my family and, and asked what, what did they want? And uh, they wanted hamburgers and French fries. And so that's what we're having tonight. So it is so simple. I did not make buns. We are going bunless tonight with our burgers because we just don't want all of the extra bread. We just want the burger. So we're gonna get our burgers made. We're gonna get sweet potato fries roasted in the oven. And then I also have a pint of baked beans. I've got another one or two in the pantry. So if I need to open another one, I will. But these are baked beans that I made in August of 22. Still very good. So French fries, baked beans, hamburger, and we've got to start adding more fermented foods into our meal because I still have like two gallons of sauerkraut in our overflow fridge. So we've got to start eating that too. But easy, quick, mom win. <laughs> Who doesn't love a burger and fries? And uh, easy for me. So we're going to get started with seasoning our beef, making our patties. We'll set them aside and then we're gonna get going on the fries. So for our meat, I just have one pound of ground beef that I thawed last night in the refrigerator. I've got one little baby egg. I thought it was a, a good use of that baby egg. I've got some homemade breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs is something that for 2024, if you are still purchasing them, consider making your own, even if it's with bread that you have purchased. Before the bread goes bad, just put it in the oven for a little bit. I usually like break it into cubes. I don't season it, right? So you can easily season your breadcrumbs with um, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, a little bit of olive oil or butter, oregano, basil, right? Kind of like an Italian seasoning, or you can just leave it plain, which is what I do. And then I have it more versatile for my uses. Um, but I usually break the bread up. I'll put it in the oven, very low heat, maybe 200 degrees. And then um, I feel like there is a hair on my face. <laughs> And then I'll take it out once it's fully dry and put it in my Vitamix and just kind of blend it up. And sometimes I get bigger clumps than not, but it's still very useful. So I'm gonna add about a half a cup of breadcrumbs into my meat and egg. And then for my seasoning, I am using a Redmond Real Salt Pre-Mix. It's called Wasatch. 
Wasatch, Wasatch steak. I just like saying that, Wasatch. Um, it's a one of a kind, peppery sweet flavor. And what is in it is Redmond Real Salt, black pepper, garlic, onion, butter powder, mustard seed, white pepper, red pepper, coriander, rosemary leaf, dill. Yeah, so we're gonna add some of this. Um, and since it already has salt and pepper, I'm not adding any salt and pepper. I don't use a lot of uh, pre-made mixes, but I trust Redmond Real Salt. I really like their company, what they stand for, and I really like their mixes. So I do have a couple of them. I've got the seasoning, like all-purpose seasoning salt, the lemon pepper, this one, and I think I have the taco one. So we're gonna add about a tablespoon of this. And then we're just gonna get our hands in and start mixing. And I'm doing this about an hour or so before I am actually going to cook the burgers. The reason is because I want my breadcrumbs, and some of them are kind of bigger pieces, but I want them to really kind of soften up so that when we're eating our burgers, we're not biting into a hard piece of bread. So the egg will help with softening it as well as just the meat. Okay, I'm just gonna start forming this into our patties. I usually find that with a pound of meat, I can get about six burgers. Now, if you think about it, right, you could do four quarter pounders. There's Marley. <laughs> Smelling the meat. Um, but I prefer to do six, just slightly smaller. What's also so great about something as simple as this, as you can season and pre-shape your burgers ahead of time. It could be an evening ahead of time, like before you go to bed for the next day's dinner. It could be in the morning, absolutely, if you had time. So having them pre-seasoned and pre-formed actually makes that process so much easier. And then by having my can of, green, of uh, baked beans, then that's really simple because all I am doing is putting that in a saucepan and warming those through. All right, our six burgers are formed. I'm just gonna set them on the counter just to, again, let those bread crumbs or bread pieces hydrate a bit. We are now gonna work on our sweet potato fries. I'm gonna get my peeler here. I've got four really decent sized sweet potatoes. I don't know that I'm gonna need all four, um, but we're gonna start with that. I'm going to kind of cut off the ends and then I do peel the skin off. Really for no other reason than a lot of the skin pieces just kind of have some bruising and I want my children to, to eat everything, <laughs> to not find a reason to not eat it. All potatoes are peeled and sliced. I did end up doing all four. I just started to preheat my oven to 400 degrees. I like to roast these anywhere between 375 to 400. And all you're looking for is that your French fry is maybe a little bit crisped up and um, cooked, right? Sometimes they get soggy, but they're still delicious. But the secret that I have been using lately to crisp them up gorgeously in the oven and not being fried Duck fat. <laughs> you may have heard about duck fat French fries in expensive restaurants. Well, spoiler alert, you can do this at home for a lot cheaper and most likely a lot healthier. This is the Epic, Epic brand rendered duck fat. Uh, this is my last jar. I've had 
I think two of these jars for a while now and I just started to use them in the last six months and they make the most delicious fries. So the best part about this is that the duck fat is a little soft. It's not like tallow and tallow's in the fridge or even lard for that matter. It's a little bit softer. So I kind of like dig my hands in and then I work it through the fries on the pan. Now I have a lot of fries on this pan. We're gonna work all of this through and then we're actually gonna separate this into another sheet pan. So I'll be cooking two sheet pans worth because the other thing, the other trick is that you don't overload your pan. Otherwise what you're doing is if I cooked it kind of like this, is that because they're stacked on top of each other, you'd be creating more of a steaming effect rather than a roasting effect. And I don't wanna steam my French fries, I want to roast them, so that's why I'm gonna separate them into two trays, evenly spaced, single layer, and they're gonna come out gorgeous. So I'm taking maybe an eighth to a quarter of a cup. That's about it. You wanna to try to get all of the fries coated as much as possible. And once you feel that you've done that, you can start separating them out onto two sheets. So everything is spread out. There's kind of airflow, there's space in between all of the fries. And I think they're gonna cook out wonderfully and be so good. At this point, you're gonna wanna season them. Basically, salt and pepper, you could get a little fancier. I am gonna go with that Redmond Real Salt Organic seasoning salt and it is redmond real salt garlic onion coriander mustard celery seed black pepper paprika turmeric and parsley this is an all-purpose seasoning it's so good and i'm going to sprinkle this on and by the way you can get 15 percent off on your own redmond real salt order and that includes the redmond relight products which i love and use almost daily myself, as well as some of their toothpaste. I love their charcoal, activated charcoal toothpaste. So you can check that out. The discount code is below for 15% off. Let's get ahead and season our potatoes. So once the oven's preheated, they're gonna go in the oven. I will probably check them at about 20 minutes and then I may need to rotate the pan. Sometimes within my oven, whichever pan is on the top shelf, I then rotate with the one that was on the bottom. So think about that with your oven. I imagine these are gonna cook minimum 30 minutes, possibly up to 35, but around the 20 minute mark, I'll check them.
Bon Appetit.